Hi, hello, welcome back. So today we are doing the mid-year freak out tag. Um, this is my second ever tag. The first one I did was the Butchered Newbie tag. It's not really mid-year because it's almost September, but I hope that you'll let me get away with this one because I only started the channel um, like a week ago and I've watched a ton of these videos and I had been wanting to do my own. So um, I'm going to go straight into it and uh let's talk what is the best book that i've read so far in 2023 so best book this is a tough one um i've read a lot of genuinely fantastic novels this year so let's talk about ship of magic by robin hobb excellent um absolutely loved it what an incredible way to introduce an entirely new cast of characters an entirely new um kind of magic an entire new world almost or a part of the world um let's talk about um any pretty much any of the greenbone saga books um jade war and jade legacy in particular just absolutely lit me on fire like i love those books um and i guess we probably i mean i don't want to sound like a ryan kyle fan channel but I don't think that I could get through talking about best books I've read so far without mentioning Of Darkness and Light, the second book in The Battle of the Broken. Um, I've got tons of videos coming up on Ryan Cahill's books, and I've also discussed Of Darkness and Light in the August wrap-up and um, in my top five fantasy series of all time. So if you want to know more, I'll link those videos in the description. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I go into depth in, in there. And I also talk a little bit about the Greenbone Saga as well in the top five fantasy series of all time. Um, it's been an incredible year for me. Um, I've read, I think, two out of my top five fantasy series of all time I read this year. And that is really good going. Best sequel that I've read so far in 2023. Now, the first question i was not very specific i just talked around some of my favorite books that i've read this year but i'm going to say right now this is this um this question is best sequel you've read and i'm going to say the best sequel i've read this year is hands down jade war so jade war is the second book in the greenbone saga written by fonda lee um this follows the call family and the, the nopi clan as they kind of they continue the, the kind of tensions that they have with the other clan in Kikon, the the mountain clan but also this book is the first kind of step outside of Kikon into this wider world so two of the major countries that on Kikon obviously go to war in jade war and I thought that Jade War was going to be about a war between Jade Warriors, obviously. But actually, it turns out that the, the war that Fonda Lee's referring to in the title is this war that's kind of, it's kind of like World War II-esque. Um, it's a really, really interesting backdrop to the story that we have going on in Kikon. And also, we get to see uh, Andon, who was probably my favorite character by the end of the first novel get some much much more kind of screen time and expansion and we get to see him out on his own away from the protection of the rest of the calls of Hilo and Shay and we get to see kind of him first out of his element and then second kind of really kind of acclimatizing to that culture it's a really really interesting book and I loved loved Andon's story and if you haven't read Green Motago by the amount of times that I've recommended it then please please let me convince you it, it's really excellent and worth a read question three 2023 release that I haven't read yet but I want to I've got the physical right here uh, and that is oh big drop as I drop a pile of books Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. So, Tress of the Emerald Sea is the first of Brandon Sanderson's secret projects. It is a um, 
kind of a fairy tale esque fantasy. It's meant to be heavily inspired by the Princess Bride. Um, I don't want to delve too much into what goes on in this novel. It's part of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere series of books, which is kind of like a Marvel Cinematic Universe, but for fantasy novels and on like a very crazy big scale. So where, you know, in Marvel, for example, you're dealing with like the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy. In um, the Cosmere, you're dealing with whole different star systems each story in each kind of franchise is contained in its own like solar system almost um trust the emerald sea as i said i'm not gonna to say too much about it i did talk a little bit about it in my physical tbr video so if you want to see some more it's in there um and um i'm not i don't think i'm gonna um uh be massively newsworthy to anyone who pays any attention to booktube because the brown and sanderson secret projects have been the real darlings of booktube for this whole year so if you don't know what it's about um i'd be surprised most anticipated release for the second half of the year now i could say more sanderson secret projects but um i think that i've got to be true to myself and talk about the ice by Ryan Carhill, which is the third novella in The Bound and the Broken. It's set, uh, it's actually a prequel again, so, so far they've all been prequels, but this one is a prequel to uh, book one, where um, you're following Aeson, who you'll know very well if you've read book one, and he's. this is the story of how he gets the MacGuffin for book one and, and and what he has to go through to get it i'm really excited to read this one i've been talking to people who have already read the advanced reader copies um i am blasting through of war and ruin and i'm sure that i will finish it in time to read the ice on launch day current plan is to read review and upload to youtube all in the same day um my thoughts on the ice I do hear it's 200 pages, so maybe I won't be able to do it all in one day, but I will certainly try for you guys, and I, I hopefully have it done by at least the end of the next day. Um, let's talk about something that I don't particularly like talking about, which is disappointing books. So my biggest disappointment of 2023 has to be Fated by Benedict Jacker. Now, this book series of books is uh Bennett Jacker writes the Alex Virus books of which this is the first one Alex Virus has been pitched to me by well by Jim Butcher in videos as if you run out of Dresden files and you want more Dresden files what should you read Alex Virus and I can absolutely see why Alex Virus clearly takes a lot of inspiration from Harry Dresden. He's kind of a wizard in modern day society. He has an interesting power set. Um, the big problem that I had with Fated, and this is gonna sound silly, but it was genuinely a problem for me, is that I found the book really easy to put down. The chapters were very, very long, so there were not very many like short, sharp scenes that pulled your attention from scene to scene to scene you'd often get like a 20 or 30 page chapters that might have one or two scenes. Um, I'm going to need to see this pace improve. I have the second book and I am planning to read it pretty soon. Um, but I really want this pace to improve. I want to see more of this world. I didn't get from Fated what I wanted, which was something that gave me the, the same sort of vibe as early Dresden. Um, this almost felt like um, one of the middling, middle Dresdens. So something like, um, I think Blood Rites is the, is the one that's set at the porn studio. Um, that one um, uh, is probably my least favourite Dresden. And well, actually no, second least favourite, Full Moon is my least favourite. Um, but it's very similar to that in that it, it kind of 
didn't really stick in my memory. Um, I found it really hard, as I said, to, to push through it. It took me almost a month to read it, and it's like 300 pages. Um, and I read almost 200 pages of, of War and Ruin today. So um, that should kind of tell you everything you need to know about the pacing and the, the kind of addictedness of um, Fated. I really hope that the series improves. I'm going to commit to at least reading the next one. And if the next one... I mean, if it's worse than Fated, um, I won't read any more. But if it is better, I'm, I'm going to try and stick the series. Because there's only 10 books. They're all out. They're all available at my local library. So I'm going to give it a shot. Biggest surprise of 2023. It's got to be Ryan Carhill, hasn't it? Like... Um, Self-published books have never been on my radar. I don't think I have... So I went to university for creative writing. I've read a lot of unpublished fiction. And I don't think I ever read one that I would have said was even middling. I would say everything that I had read that wasn't published traditionally was bad. And I'm not talking like, oh, you know, it was okay. But I'm talking like unreadable bad. But Brian Carhill isn't just readable. He is compulsively readable. His prose is really, really strong. It's, it draws you on from scene to scene, from line to line. The dialogue is incredible. The I can really vividly imagine scenes in my head as I read the novels, and and I'm just shocked, the especially of Blood and Fire, his first ever novel, the first thing he wrote, the first thing he finished, is, you know, a four star book, and this series is now one of my favourite series of all time, and it's self published, uh, it's just an absolute shock to me based on other self-published things that I've read. So let's talk, uh, well, the next question is, is an obvious one, and I'm pretty sure you can guess the answer, which is, who is your favourite new author or debut in 2023 or is new to you in 2023? I think the obvious answer there is Carhill, as he's actually the only author that's totally new to me in 2023. Um, but... I have also gotten kind of I started reading a couple of authors at the very tail end of last year and I'm going to count them so uh, Robin Hobb, uh, Blake Crouch and Fonda Lee are all incredible new additions and um, Blake Crouch I'm still working through his back catalogue so I've read two of his books and I'm hoping to read um, some more in the near future. And Fonda Lee, I've read all three of the Greenbone Saga, as discussed, and they were incredible. And she's an auto-buy author for me now. Like, if I see a new book by her, um, it immediately goes on the TBR. The next question is newest fictional crush. Um, I don't really have fictional crushes on book characters in um, some very small... Sometimes I feel like I become unreasonably attached to certain characters that aren't like the protagonists. So um like Captain Kennet in the Ship of Magic absolutely loved him. Um and um his uh, his partner, I can't remember her name now. It's it's been like five months since I read the first book. Um but I absolutely loved that kind of set of characters on the pirate ship. Newest favourite character? Probably, it's going to be a toss-up here. Um, so, Captain Kennet, again, incredible. Um, I really liked Nico in Jade Legacy. And um, newest favourite character? I can't pick the entirety of The Bound and the Broken, but I'm going to talk about a character that um, I did not care about at all. For the first book, um, almost actively disliked. In the second book, was kind of like, oh, I'm not too interested in what's going on with this guy. And then in a war and ruin, 
I have absolutely fallen for them. I think they're an incredible character. I love seeing what's going on next with them. I think that their story, the plot line that they're following, is incredible. Now, um, if you are the kind of person who's a bit like me, and are extremely spoiler-averse, and you don't want to know the name of a character who is in book three, because then you know that they survived book one and two, skip forward five seconds from... Uh, and I'll, like, wave my hand... Um, uh, and that will tell you when I've said the name, okay? So, the name of this character is Darlin Verandir, that's Aeson's son. Um, he's the guy who is is in the kind of the Dwarven Freehold for a lot of the series so far. And I, I really disliked him in book one. Um, I thought that he was... Kind of not necessary as a character. Um, a lot of the stuff that he was doing kind of felt su kind of surplus. Um, and then in book two, I was like, well, I'm interested in the situation that he's in, but not him, the character. And book three, oh, massive redemption. I love this character. And I cannot wait to see what is happening with them as we finish up this book. Next one, book that made you cry. No books made me cry. Um, probably ever, and definitely not this year. Um, I did, however, get very emotional, and I felt a real, like, I felt kind of choked up reading um, one particular scene in Jade Legacy. If you are a big fan of that series, you probably know what that is. Um, but really, even talking around it would be a spoiler. So um, I'm just going to say Jade Legacy. Um, and also, there is a certain big death in Battleground by Jim Butcher, the latest Dresden Files book. And I was just not prepared at all. I could didn't expect it. It happened kind of out of the, out of the middle of nowhere. And um, excellent, excellent. Jim managed to shock me and surprise me. And uh, after 16 Dresden novels, I kind of thought I knew where he was going. And I realised in Battleground that I did not. Book that made you happy. Honestly, almost all of the books that I read this year made me happy. Um, the Three Body Problem made me kind of confused and bored. But um, overall, most of the books made me feel really happy. Um, I would say the book that had the most kind of good feeling was Skin Game by Jim Butcher. So this is the um, Dresden Files novel where Dresden and his arch enemy um, decide to, or have to, pull a heist on Satan in hell. Um, so... It's a pretty cool book. Um, it's got a load of heist movie tropes and it's very funny and it comes at a point in the Dresden Files that um, is kind of a bit of a downer, but it gives you an uplifting ending. I really loved it. What is the most beautiful book that you've acquired this year? Now, I can't say Trust the Emerald Sea because the UK standard hardcover is doesn't look that great i mean like the book is emerald sea and this is kind of lime green um not a fan of a lot of that um i usually like the sanderson covers but i just didn't really get on with that one at all but i think that the best cover of the year has to go to so far the way be down by philip chase um, Philip actually commented on my TBR video when I said I was going to be reading his book, which is really exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to reading and reviewing this one. Um, and uh, maybe we'll talk to Philip a little more in the comments. So um, that'll be really cool. What book do I need to read by the end of the year? Oh, it's the way of it, Dan. And um, that's probably my number one, I have to read this by the end of the year book, followed very, very closely by Mad Chip by Robin Hobb. So ideally, I would like to finish Mad Chip in a perfect world. 
I will finish the whole Life of Traders trilogy this year, and then that will leave my brain kind of closed off from big fantasy series because I'll be either up to date on them or in the case of a hob I'll have finished that sub series so um that'll kind of leave me open to maybe starting something new um I have been thinking about starting Malazan or the Wheel of Time next year so it would be nice or make or well, actually as well a Joe Abercrombie's um Press Law uh, series. So that's kind of, those are the three big hitters that I've not touched at all in epic fantasy and grimdark fantasy. Um, and uh, I think that those would be a really good way for me to kind of frame next year if I was reading one a month, for example. So um, it'd be nice to finish off Life of Traders so that I could go into that with a kind of clear, clear slate. I know that obviously Hobbes books continue on for the rest of the realm of the elderly realm of the elderlings and I've still got like you know 10 books or whatever left but each uh, trilogy has felt the first trilogy for example felt quite self-contained there were obviously threads that could be picked up but I didn't feel like I needed to pick them up immediately so uh, final question here is who is your favourite bookish community member? Now, I've interacted with a load of great booktubers this year. So, for example, uh, Matt at Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews. We were just chatting today about um, Brian Car uh, Brian Ryan Carhill's books. Philip Chase, um, I've talked to him on Twitter and on YouTube in the comments about his book, The Way of Dan. And uh, I have to say, though, only one of them, only one of my uh, favourite booktubers subscribed to my new channel, which is Criminally. So Criminally um, isn't a fantasy YouTuber. He reviews uh, crime, horror, um, oh, what's the third one? Pulp. Crime, horror, pulp, and that sort of thing. That's what he says at the beginning of his videos. Um, obviously, it's a good trademark because I can kind of remember it. Um, he did a fantastic video earlier this year about how to get into booktube and uh, I'd watched a few of his videos in the past and I saw this booktube video and I thought oh um, I'm getting into booktube I'll, I'll give it a shot and I really enjoyed it and I felt like of all the videos about getting into booktube um, his was the one that gave the most actionable and relevant advice um, so I'm going to be starting to implement that because I, I have, did actually only watch it since recording my first few videos I'm going to be implementing that across my next few videos and hopefully you'll see some improvements and uh, you'll have to let me know if you think that I'm doing a good job um, and if by some chance uh, Ollie you have made it to the end of this video to see whether you're featured or not you are uh, thanks again for your advice and um, love to uh, chat again in the future in comments and maybe in a collaboration or whatever. Um, it's been great talking to you guys today. I've really enjoyed doing the mid-year freakout tag. Um, I didn't know whether I would like doing tag videos up front, um, but I kind of like just kind of talking about the books that I've loved this year. And the reason I started this YouTube channel is to talk to people about the books that I love and to talk to people who love the books that I've read. And well, this is it, that, that's what we've been doing. So um, thanks again for watching. Please make sure to drop a like, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to, no pressure. But also, uh, why don't you drop a comment? So the last thing we talked about was criminally. So drop a criminal emoji in with your comments so I can know that you finished the whole video. That'll be fun. And I will speak to you guys soon.